In this video, I'm going to go over how to track inventory in QuickBooks Online. You will need the QuickBooks Online Plus or Advanced version to do this. And before you get started, you'll need to check your settings, go to the gear icon, account and settings, and just make sure under the sales tab, you have the show product service column on sales forms turn on and track quantity and price rate, track inventory quantity on hand. You'll want both of those turned on as well. And then under the expense tab, you'll need to show items table on expense and purchase forms. That needs to be turned on. And I'm gonna also use purchase orders, so I have that turned on. And then to look at the items of inventory, I'm gonna to go to sales, products, and services. And I'm gonna sort by type. I have to click on it twice to get the inventory at the top. So this sample company already has four items already set up. You can see at the top, it does tell you if things are low stock and out of stock. Right now, all four of their items have items on hand. You'll need to put quantities under the reorder point in order for QuickBooks to tell you when something is low in stock. To set up your items, you'll just need to click on new and choose the inventory item. Or you can import a list if you already have a list on hand. Maybe you're importing from another software or maybe it's just easier for you to create a spreadsheet as opposed to entering things one by one. So you would just click on import. You can import a CSV or Excel file, or you can use Google Sheets. And I would recommend before importing to preview the sample, or if you're doing Excel, to download the sample file so that you can see what the format is supposed to look like. And I do have the sample already downloaded, and this is what the Excel file would look like, or the CSV file. I'm gonna demonstrate adding an item manually. So I would just click on new, click on inventory, and then set up my item. There's already a rock fountain, so I'm just gonna add a large rock fountain. I'm gonna use an SKU similar to what's already in here. I'm gonna put in that there's zero on hand at this point. This is a new item that is gonna be used in this company and they haven't ordered it yet as of today. And then the reorder point, I am gonna put two on here just so you can see what that's gonna look like under low stock. Um, the inventory asset account, I'm just gonna use what's already set up in this sample company just to make things easier, but you could of course change these and custom these account names to your business. And then the description is just gonna be what shows up on the invoice. And I'm gonna put a sales price of $300 and a cost of $135. And you can put a preferred vendor if you want. And then of course you can edit the sales tax if you want. So I'm gonna save and close. And now it shows me that one item is low in stock and one item is out of stock and it shows a little red zero here under quantity on hand. Now, before I show you how to purchase items, let's go ahead and look at the reports so that we can see what these items look like on the reports. So you've got the inventory valuation detail report, which is gonna show you all of the items, the starting point, the purchases, which would be purchased by writing checks or vendor bills, and then sales, which would be on customer invoices. So it shows you a lot of detail in this report and you can change the dates of the report accordingly. And then the other report was the inventory valuation summary, which is just gonna give you the quantity on hand and the asset value, which is the cost value, not the sales price value. Okay, and then also you have the physical inventory worksheet. This is a good report to print out 
and get your physical count on hand to compare it to what you have in the system and make adjustments accordingly. And then it also shows you the quantity on purchase order. This is good for your sales staff to see what is on order and coming in. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a vendor that's already here that already has some transactions in it. We're gonna to go to Norton Lumber and Building Materials and we're gonna create a purchase order for five of those items. Now it does bring in data from the last purchase order, but I'm gonna just change this. We're gonna assume that five of these large rock fountains were are gonna be purchased. Now you can see when I hover over the quantity, it does tell me what's on hand now and what my reorder point is. So that's really good for you to have that information while you are making an order. I'm gonna go ahead and save and close this. Now I'm gonna go back to the reports. If I go to my inventory valuation summary or detail report, it does not show that order. It does not show that quantity. However, if I go to the physical inventory sheet, it does show that I've ordered five of those items. Okay, let me go back to the vendor. Now, once the order comes in, then I'm gonna be able to create a check from this purchase order or a vendor bill. Let's go ahead and copy this to a vendor bill. And I'm just gonna save. I'm not gonna post a payment yet. So you can see that it brought in the items that were purchased. Now we have them in stock. So I'm gonna go back to the reports real quick and just show you. Let's look at the detail report. There's the starting point of that item. There were zero and five were just, just came in and a vendor bill was created at that time. And then I also want to go back to that vendor and demonstrate instead of a vendor bill, what if it was paid for with a check? So let me just remove that bill. And instead, I'm going to write a check. And you can see that over here on the right hand side, it does give me the option to add either one of those bills to the check. So I'm just going to pretend I'm writing a check to pay for for the $675 amount. And I would just save and close. Um, so I could have added a vendor bill and then mark that as paid with a check, or I could just directly write a check, whatever your preference is, that's fine. I would tend to use a vendor bill if it was something I was not gonna pay immediately. Whereas if I was paying for it immediately, I might be more likely to just go ahead and write a check. Now that the item is in stock, I'm gonna show you the process of selling it to a customer and creating a customer invoice. So I just clicked on a random customer and I'm gonna create an invoice and assume that I sold one of those items. And it is a sales price of $300 and I'm going to need to add sales tax to that sale as well, or to this invoice. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and look at the reports so we can see what this looks like. So now if I go to the inventory valuation detail report, you can see that it shows one sale of that item. And if I go to my inventory worksheet, it shows now there's four on hand and there's zero on purchase order. Let's go ahead and look at the profit and loss just for today. If I look at it under cash basis, it does show all five items that were paid for it shows the check to pay for those five fountains at $135 each. 
but it does not show any income because I didn't mark that customer invoice as paid. I created the invoice, but at this point, it's not showing paid by the customer yet. Let's look at accrual basis and see what the difference is. Okay, under accrual basis, it shows the sale of that product. And then the cost of goods sold now only shows one item that was sold. Because under accrual basis, you leave your products in your inventory account until they are sold. And then you mark them as cost of goods sold as an expense. So depending on which method you use, whether you use cash or accrual, it is going to affect how your financial statements look. And let's also just jump over to the balance sheet so we can see that as well. If I go to cash basis, inventory doesn't even show up. Under cash basis, it immediately goes to cost of goods sold as soon as it's purchased. Whereas under accrual basis, it does show inventory on hand. So depending on which method you use, it is going to look a little different on your reports. So I just like to point that stuff out as I'm making the videos when I can, just so you're aware of it. So I hope that helped for me to walk through the process. Thank you for watching.